welcome and, and thank you for coming today. My name is Mary DeCamp and I'm here with Code Pink Women for Peace. Code Pink's goal is to redirect military spending into life affirming endeavors. Consider for a moment whether spending $1.121 trillion that Congress has approved for military operations, base security, reconstruction, foreign aid, embassy costs, and veterans health care since the 9-11 attacks has benefited our people. Uh, my name is Rocheli Guy and I'm representing uh, Tucson Women in Black. The violence that occurred in our backyard the other day is indeed shocking and mind-numbing. And yes, it has strong connections to the incessant right-wing hate speech flooding and polluting the very air we breathe. But it's connected to other things too. It's connected to a country that has unlimited resources to spend on funding wars and on supporting by various means, military, economic and political, the obscenely rich and powerful at the expense of the powerful, uh, of the powerless and destitute. Hi, I'm Bets Putnam Hidalgo. I'm representing Middle East Justice Now. And perhaps you're wondering what Middle East Justice Now has to do with the horrendous and tragic shooting that took place on Saturday. Well, when we focus on Israel-Palestine, we focus on a seemingly intractable conflict where it's abundantly clear that violence from either side will offer no solution. I am Dr. Barbara Warren and I represent Physicians for Social Responsibility in Arizona. PSR works nationally and internationally to further the cause of nuclear disarmament and environmental justice. And at heart, at the heart of our work, is peace. We are deeply grieving for the losses and critical injuries of friends and supporters and the critical injury of Congressman Gabrielle Giffords. This event is a call to sanity and the end of violent rhetoric and hate crimes across America. I'm Dina Afek. I'm uh, today representing two groups. The first one is Tucson Tikkun community. Tikkun means healing, repairing, and transforming the world. We were all stopped in our tracks by this awful, senseless tragedy. We are saddened, horrified, and angry. I hope that we can all stop long enough to not only look at and analyze the context within which this tragedy happened, but to look for tikkun, for healing, repairing, and change, so nothing like that will ever happen again, anywhere. My name is John Gettle, and I represent Arizona for Normal. The tragedy of Saturday, the massacre of Saturday, uh, some in the media have blamed on the suspect's alleged use of marijuana, and that, uh, that uh, youth uh, that uh, committed this awful, awful crime uh, has psychological issues. I think that's evident in his writings and videos and chose to self-medicate with whatever he could get. That is indicative of our society's treatment of the mentally ill. My name is Rula Khalidi and I represent the Tucson chapter of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee a national grassroots civil rights organization. First and foremost, the Arab American community extends its deepest sorrow and condolences to the families of the victims for the loss of their innocent loved ones in the killings that took place this Saturday. We offer our prayers for the recovery of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords and the other victims injured in this tragedy. We pray for strength and patience for their families and loved ones. And last but not least, we pray for the healing and resilience of our beautiful city, state, and country. My name is Dave Ewald. I'm the Executive Director of Natural System Solutions. I'm also here today representing Transition Pima. Today, we are exhibiting many symptoms of a very sick society foremost today, of course, is that we're destroying our one and only life support system to, to continue an entirely irrational system of infinite economic growth on a finite planet. 
But there's another symptom of our cultural pathology that I want to address today. The rhetoric of hate and fear is propagated and enticed by the only interest that it truly serves, elite power and control hierarchies. These special interests maintain their control by keeping us divided against ourselves. Whether you are a member of the Tea Party or a member of the progressive movement, the problem is not big government, but bad government. Tucson peace activists represented by the undersigned organizations express their deepest sympathy for the anguish experienced by the victims and their families of the shooting on January 8, 2011, and their fervent hopes for the full recovery of Representative Gabrielle Giffords and the others who were injured. Tucson peace activists also wish to state their abhorrence of the rhetorical political context of the shooting. That context includes Arizona's near bottom position in expenditures on education and mental health services, and near top position in laws favorable to gun ownership and use. My name is Sarah Jean Harwood and I represent Sustainable Tucson. A sustainable community is not a community filled with violence. It is a community filled with peace and understanding and civil discourse. This is something that we can all follow. This is a simple, small thing. Basic courtesy to one another. Basic respect. My name is Chet Gardner. I'm representing Transition Pima. In this context today, the most important part of that resilience is to let go of the patterns based on fear and hatred and the other and them to bust ourselves loose from that. My name is Dave Croto. I represent Veterans for Peace. And I wish to reiterate what we just heard about why we're here as activists in the peace movement. The Tucson Peace activists represent the members that you see here today with our deepest sympathy and anguish experienced by the victims and the families of the shooting on uh, January 8th. Their fervent hope is for full recovery of Gabrielle Giffords and the other victims of this crime. Tucson peace activists also wish to state their adherent, adherence to rhetorical political contents for this shooting. The context includes Arizona's near bottom position in expenditures for education, on, on mental health services, and near top position in laws favoring gun ownership and their use. Tucson peace activists that are here today reaffirm their commitment to nonviolence, actions in promoting peace locally, nationally, and globally to all human beings. It's time to really give peace a chance. Press, where are you? Where are you, international press? Where are you? It's time to come. This is the voice of nonviolence. And you are not here. Maybe some of you are, I hope so. But the majority of you are not here. I admit I am an extremist. Hillary Clinton, I am an extremist for peace. We need a completely new economy. We need to move from the American flag image to this. We need to think in holistic terms. This is the health of the planet. And the media needs to understand that if they want to understand why our youth are on the verge of a civil war. My name is David Machen. For most of the last 40 years, I've been involved in one form or another in radio and television broadcasting, in entertainment terms under the pseudonym King David McKenzie. As Sheriff Dupnick established so eloquently on Saturday evening, the hate talk broadcasting industry in Arizona has crossed over from an alleged free speech issue with only radio station owners being able to exercise freedom of speech over the public airwaves to a deadly serious public safety issue. Our next speaker is Sylvia Haskvich. Hi everybody. I really want to speak to the woman that was really had some grief here about what we're doing. What I do is I'm part of the Center for Nonviolent Communication or Compassionate Communication. 
that's my stuff over there. I'm offering empathy. Um, to me, what this is about is we all need empathy. We all need to know that what's happening for us has been heard, that we can really connect with the pain in us so that we don't lash out in ways that are not connecting. And often when we do violent acts, I find it's because the revenge or any type of that is because we're not understood, we're not heard. People need a place that's safe that they can really speak their truth to be able to heal. So we need to learn a language of compassion and care and love. And some of the ways we can do that is to realize that we all have the same needs. Even that boy, that 22 year old boy that shot all these people, he was doing the best to meet his needs even though none of us would agree with the strategy. Our last speaker today before we end with a song will be Peter, they're fixing the road D. Hello, I've, I've come here and I come here as a stranger. I journeyed to Arizona because I heard it was a very peaceful area and this was a weekend before the shootings happened. And I watched the tragedy unfold upon me. My question wasn't upon the shooter himself, but upon the people that were killed and injured. And I can look behind me now and I could say I am part of those people that are in there. I, as a Native American, am injured too over this. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. We are not afraid. We are not afraid, we are not afraid today. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome. practice peace we will practice peace we will practice peace today oh deep in my heart I do believe that we will Peace in your hearts. Thank you all.